Hello students, this is a tutorial video of how to do a monohybrid cross. There are several types of cross and one such cross is the monohybrid cross that was used by Mendel during his experiment. In order to do a monohybrid cross, at first we have to know about the contrasting characters and the alleles through which those characters are represented. So this is the chart for the seven contrasting characters that Mandel had chosen during his experiment. The seven contrasting character that Mandel selected those were plant height, flower position, pot color, pot shape, flower color, seed shape and seed color and these traits they have two traits one is tall another one is dwarf for the plant height flower position that can be either axial or it can be terminal pod similarly it can be green yellow pod shape it can be full or it can be constricted flower color it can be violet or it can be white seed shape it can be round or wrinkled and seed color it can be yellow or green now all these traits that the plant bear these are represented with the help of some alphabets and these alphabets are only called as the alleles or those are the genes that a particular individual possesses, and these genes they express as a character for all the living organisms. In this way, Mandel he selected these seven traits for his experiment, and in those he had seen two contrasting characters or two contrasting traits, and those were the dominant and the recessive traits. And for those dominant and recessive traits, he had given some alphabets which were representation of the contrasting genes or factors that inherited from one generation into the other. So those factors, now we can make a cross out of it and go through the result that Mandel had obtained actually during his experiment. During his experiment, Mandel got the monohybrid ratio of 3 is to 1. As you know about Mandel's experiment, that how he had done the experiment, he crossed two types of plants. Those had contrasting characters. Say suppose for the stem height, some plants they were tall, some plants they were dwarf. Now what he had done that he crossed between the tall parent and the dwarf parent. He took one as the male, another as the female. In that way, he had made a cross where he considered only one contrasting character and that is only called as the monohybrid cross. So let's try to understand what is this monohybrid cross. Points to be kept in mind during a cross. The first point is that the pea plant is a bisexual plant that means both the male and the female reproductive parts are present in the same flower. That is, that the androecium and the gynoecium, it is present in the same flower. Point number two, therefore, Mandel had done emasculation. Now, emasculation, that means, this is the process of removal of the stamen, which is the male reproductive part, from the bisexual flower before pollination takes place in that flower. Point number three is, now let's consider the tall plant or the emasculated flower as the female plant because there the tall plant 
in the 12th length the flowers they were emasculated where all the male parts of the flower they were removed so let's consider the 12th plant as the female plant and the dwarf plant as the male plant because there the stamen they were intact and the female parts they were removed and the fourth point is the 12th plant will be a capital T capital T alleles and in the female gamete all the gametes they will possess capital T single capital T because during meiosis cell division in the tall plant the alleles capital T capital T they will segregate or they will divide and each gamete they will bear only one single T and similar is the case in case of the dwarf plant so dwarf plant it will be a small t small t alleles but in the male gametes small t will be present because of the haploid nature now let's come to the cross this is the first line for the cross where the parents they are written and there the genotypes and the phenotypes of the parents are written here capital T capital T and small t small t these are called as the genotypes because they are the genetic makeup for the tallness and dwarfness of the pea plant and just below to it are the gametes so capital T capital T plant that we considered as the female plant all the female gametes they will produce small t a single small t in each of the gamete because that will carry the character of tallness and in the plant bearing small t small t there are all the gametes they will be a small t which is haploid and that the male gametes they will bear the dwarfness in their gametes now during the process of fertilization the male gamete and the female gamete they will fuse with each other now after fusion the capital T from the female gamete and the small t from the male gamete they will come into the same zygote and this zygote will later form the embryo and the next generation plants they will all become the tall plants because of the presence of the dominant allele there which is capital T and these plants they will bear capital T small t for uh, as the genotype for the character of the stem height in the parents it was capital T capital T for the tall plant and the small t small t for the dwarf plant because those were pure line or homozygous parents now but in case of this f1 generation which we call it to be the first failure generation now this plants after the act of artif uh, after the act of artificial pollination the individuals now they bears two types of alleles in the zygote and later in the whole body which expresses the stem height and there these alleles are capital T small t which is the heterozygous condition it is called heterozygous condition because the zygote it bears capital T small t genes or alleles for the character stem height and such type of plants are called as the hybrid plants these hybrid plants during the time of gamete formation they will now produce two types of gametes because for the stem height these plants they bear two types of alleles one is capital T and another one is small t so 50% of the gametes they will be a capital T in it and 50% of the gametes they will bear small t in it and here the gametes it will be both male gametes and the female gametes because no 
crossing is done in case of the F1 generation. The bisexual plants, they were allowed self-pollination. And during that self-pollination, these two types of gametes, they fused with each other. That is, the male gamete that possesses capital T may fuse with the female gamete that possesses capital T or the male gamete that possesses capital T fuses with the female gamete that possesses small t or it can be like that that the male gamete that possesses small t fuses with the female gamete that possesses capital T or it can be like that that the male gamete that possesses small t fuses with the female gamete that also possesses small t. In that way, during the self-pollination and self-fertilization process, Mendel obtained two types of plants. Three part of his field, they possess the tall plants and the one part, it possess the dwarf plants. So, from the Punnett square, so here we can determine that 3 is to 1 ratio. That means 3 plants, they were tall and the one plant, it was dwarf. So, during the experiment conducted by Mandel also, he got the same result that the 3 parts of the field, all the Plant, pea plants they were tall but one part they again regained their parental feature that is small to small t and that is why it became dwarf this is because that the two recessive gene when they comes together so they again expresses their character so in that way Mandel got the monohybrid cross as 3 is to 1 you can check the Punnett square here that capital T capital T that is homozygous tall capital T small t capital T small t so these two individuals they are heterozygous tall so these are the three individuals in the Punnett square that were tall and the one individual that is small t small t so that was the dwarf plant so this is called as the monohybrid ratio and the monohybrid ratio is 3 is to 1 but if we find out the genotypic monohybrid ratio then the ratio it is 1 is to 2 is to 1 because capital T capital T that is only 1 in number that means one part will be completely parental dominant or homozygous dominant then one part it will be homozygous recessive small t small t so one part those were homozygous recessive and the two parts that is capital T small t as in the Punnett square so these are heterozygous tall so in case of the monohybrid cross, we get the two types of ratio. One is the phenotypic ratio and the monohybrid ratio that is also written as 3 is to 1, which is the phenotypic ratio. But if we need to uh, know the genotypic ratio, then it will be 1 is to 2 is to 1. So in this way, a monohybrid cross is done and a monohybrid ratio is determined.